Hi there, welcome to our daily teaching video. Hey, in a moment, I'm going to share a piece of my new online course, The Spirit-Filled Life. This is a course, a 12-part course, on how to live full and how to live in the overflow of the Holy Spirit. More details, check out the link below, but I know this is gonna be a blessing to you. Hey, before we do that real quick, let me show three quick announcements. Number one, please do subscribe wherever you're watching this, YouTube, podcasts, lots of different places. Uh, I'd love to have you as part of our online community. Secondly, I have an email newsletter I send out every Friday with news, updates, free things, books I'm reading, travel news, missions, lots of different things like that and uh, you can sign up for that with the link below and we have a three hour teaching on how to hear God's voice. We'd love to get into your inbox when you uh, subscribe for our email newsletter. Lastly, let me just mention my ministry school. I have an online ministry school, ministryschool.net, that is aimed at helping believers develop and grow in their faith in God. This is a faith ministry school. Uh, we have lots of individual courses and a monthly subscription. We have a group, a private mentoring group that meets using a Zoom call once a month and has question and answer, lots of different things there. So do check that out before below. Right, let's jump into this lesson on the Spirit-filled life. Word. Second Peter 1 uh, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we would become partakers of the divine nature. So I am a new person and my job, my role, my endeavor, my work, if you will, is to learn who I am, is to renew my mind, is to practice the new life that I've already been given. Let's talk a little bit about our character and our habits. I forget the Greek word, but I, I've been told that the in a way, there are three, three words, three phrases. This is true of many languages. Choices, habits, and character. And the plural of the word choices is the word habit. In Latin, I believe it is. And the plural of the word habits is the word character. If you could, it's probably not possible, but if you could look and gather and write down all of my habits, all of the things I practice, you would know my character. If you could gather all of my choices, you would know my habits. If you would gather all my habits, you'd know my character. And we've been given the life of Jesus. So these fruits of the Spirit we talked about, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, that is the nature of God. That is the nature of Jesus. That's the nature of the Spirit of Christ, of Holy Spirit. And we've been joined spiritually one with him. So those things, we don't have to work at them. We don't have to try. I'm trying to love people. I'm trying to live at peace, even though I'm not. I'm trying to be long-suffering. I'm trying to be kind. What we need to realize is we already have all of these things. And they're the fruit of life in the Spirit. They're not the root of life in the Spirit. You do not walk in the Spirit because you're loving, joyful, peaceful, long-suffering, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and a person of self-control. Rather, because you are in the Spirit, you are a spiritual person, you've been made new in Jesus, that if you, if you spend enough time allowing the life of the Spirit to dominate you and being who you actually are, if you can be your true spiritual self, you will love. If you're allowing the life of God to live and overflow in you, it will, sooner or later, produce the fruit of joy and the fruit of peace and the fruit of long-suffering. So our job is to abide. Our job is to stay. Our job is to rest. And our job is to actually choose to practice the things, this new nature that's already in us. As I said, we don't have to work at it. Rather, we've got to work it out. It's been put within us and we have to practice it and we've got to choose these things. We've got to make these fruits of the Spirit our choices, our habits, and they will literally become our character. We've got to practice the new life that has been given to us. So I want you to catch that. The fruit of the Spirit are things we already possess in our spirit man. The fruits of the Spirit are things that we can experience from God. So God is loving towards us. I can experience God's love. Wow, he loves me. I can experience the joy God has towards me. I can experience peace with God. 
I can experience God's long suffering with me. I can experience God's kindness, God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's gentleness, God's self-control. So I, I should both experience these things like as a experiences God has towards me. I should walk in these things personally. And then we get to practice them, walking them out in our relationship and our engagements with other people. And this is a really great lesson as well, is that everything is meant to work together for our good. So as you go through life, you will find people who are not loving. You'll find situations that are not joy giving. You'll find situations that are not conducive to peace or to long suffering. You'll find yourself being impatient. You'll find people who don't deserve kindness or goodness. You'll find people who are unfaithful when you're faithful. You'll find people being aggressive when you're gentle. You'll be tempted not to walk in self-control. And I believe that what we should do is allow life to not live in reaction to life, but allow the life we go through to constantly be pushing us back into, if you will, who we really are and constantly like finding, if I'm finding myself around people who are not loving, who I don't naturally of myself want to love, what I've got to do is stop and draw from that love. Lord, I thank you. Your love in me flows out of me. Thank you, Father, you love me. Thank you, I, I love myself with your love, not because I'm lovely, but because you make me lovely and your love is in me. And then I'm gonna practice loving other people. So every time somebody is mean with me, I get a chance to grow in God's love. Every time I'm in a situation which has no natural joy, I can rejoice in the Lord. So these are things that we can experience. The, if you will, nouns that we have, but they're also like imperative verbs that we can do. You know, I can experience God's love. I can stay in God's love, but I can love. At times, God is coming to us and he's saying love. At times he's coming and he's saying rejoice. I've given you my joy, but rejoice. At times he's coming and he's saying be at peace. Stay in the peace. Allow the peace of God to keep your heart and your mind. Stay, <clears throat> excuse me, within that place of peace. So we need to practice these things in our life until they become quite literally spiritual habits. Let me give you one more thing as I end today that will really help you in this area. Um, I love to do this. I heard, I think it was Kenneth Hagin and maybe the last sermon he ever preached, preach on this theme. He preached on 1 Corinthians 13. I believe it was in the Amplified Bible, but basically said we should take this description of love you know, in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, love suffers long, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not parade itself, love is not puffed up. And um, what Kenneth kind of Hagin said is we can actually, you know, God is love. So we can literally say God suffers long, God is kind, God does not envy, God does not parade himself, God is not puffed up, God does not behave rudely, God does not seek his own, God is not easily provoked, God thinks no evil, rejoices, etc. But he said what we can also do as a position of faith is take these, take that truth and speak them over ourselves, speak them of ourselves. I, Graham suffers long, I am kind, I do not envy, I don't parade myself. I am not puffed up. I don't behave rudely. I don't seek my own. I'm not easily provoked. I think no evil. I don't rejoice in evil. I rejoice in the truth. I bear all things. God's love in me believes all things. God's love in me hopes all things. God's love endures in all things. God's love in me will never fail. And take that as a, as a faith position because that's actually God's love has been perfected in you. And you can take that and begin proclaiming that and acting that out over your life yeah and as god's love is perfected in us god is perfected in us let us love for god is love boom so let's practice the new character that we've already received in christ jesus sila guys in tomorrow's lesson um if you're watching this day by day uh lesson number six we're going to be talking about the presence of god practicing the presence of the lord we're talking about walking in the spirit and the presence of god See you in that lesson. Bye for now. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, remember, you can download the whole course. Uh, there'll be a link below on our website, ministryschool.net. have a special offer on this course at the moment, and I know it will be a blessing to you. Remember to hit the subscribe button, sign up for our email newsletter, and do check out our ministry and all the links below. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.